All right, hey everybody, this is uh, Carson Clues with uh, ATA Martial Arts Kaiser and uh, Cry for Kids. And I wanted to go over, um, it's been a while since so we've continued our video series, but we're getting back at it. We've got two more videos to finish up our series on uh, parenting hacks from martial arts. Uh, little tips and tools that we can take from learning how to teach martial arts and just add them to our parenting tool belt. So what we're going to talk about today is making a clear distinction between the difference between ability versus inability and easy versus difficult and why we as instructors and we as parents want to be very careful about that. The rule that we go by is this, is that anything within the student's ability we should hold them accountable for. We should be aware of the difficulties we should, we should know that they're there. But still, if it is difficult for them, it's the same accountability as if it's easy for them. It was within their ability and therefore it falls into the realm of choices. Now, if they are unable to do it, our job as instructors is really to think to the future. We, uh, to build an ability takes time. Um, our, uh, the gentleman that started our entire organization uh, Eternal Grandmaster H.U. Lee, one of his favorite sayings was, today impossible, tomorrow possible. So if it is in fact impossible today, and it, that's true for a lot of our students, um, a lot of our four, five, six year olds standing still for longer than 15 seconds is impossible today, but it might be possible tomorrow. So that's what we're talking about in the field of um, if they're unable to do it, we as instructors and we as parents have to think long term of how are we going to build that ability piece by piece. However, if they are able, then we have to, we should think about and understand the challenge, but we still can hold them accountable. So let's take it like this. Um, we could be talking about a wide range of challenges for different students. Challenges include, for one student, um, they didn't get much sleep last night. Or for another student, they, they didn't eat at the, same, at the right time, and so they're goofing off because they're hungry. I know that happens to my kids a lot. Um, or, it's not that we don't feed them, it's that when they're hungry, they anyway. Or for another student, it might be a condition they have. We could be talking about ADD. We could be talking about ADHD. Uh, myself, I had ADD growing up, so I know what it's like to try and focus when everything in you wants not to. We could be talking about high functioning or low functioning autism. We don't know. Uh, so in all of these scenarios, there might be different challenges and different levels of challenge being placed, but we as instructors, or all of us as parents, have to distinguish, is this within their ability? And if it is within their ability, even though it's difficult, can we still hold them to that standard and expect it of them? So, uh, one thing as we talk about, uh, let's take, for example, uh, a student with ADHD who has difficulty standing still. Um, the question we like to ask is, if that student knew that if they moved, if they moved, if they weren't able to stand still for 15 seconds, that every video game system they've ever loved would melt or explode or anything like that. If they knew that, would that make it important enough to them to endure the challenge? Now, it doesn't matter if we're talking about behavior or a physical challenge. We're going to be asking the same question of a student where, let's take, say we have a student that's working on their push-ups, their upper body strength, and we ask the question, hey, um, if this student knew that all of their favorite, uh, all of their favorite shows would disappear and never be seen again, if they couldn't do 20 push-ups, would they be able to do 20 push-ups or would they give out at 19? If the answer is yes, they could, it's just hard, then it's a standard that we can hold them to and encourage them towards. 
If it's a stand they can't do, then now what we have to do is do smaller challenges so we can build the ability in the future. So again, instructors, we have to make a clear distinction of what is within the student's ability and what is outside of the student's ability. Now, another thing that we want to do is, as we talked about previous videos, at the beginner belt ranks for the first year of martial arts training, whether they succeed or whether they fail should have everything to do with their choices and nothing to do with their abilities. But as they get closer to black belt, uh, in the higher color belt ranks, those second and third years of training, now, whether they succeed or fail will be based on their abilities. And their abilities will be a result of the previous choices they made. That's why we say when we look at ability, we have to make a long-term plan to build those abilities. Also, as they get to the higher ranks, we have to start to teach them the let me back up for a second. No, let me finish my thought. We have to start to teach them the harsh reality of regardless of how difficult it is for you, the consequences stay the same. One person uh, does not have much of an anger problem. The other person really struggles with an anger problem. So this person who doesn't struggle, they, it doesn't take much of an effort for them to stay calm. This person, to have self-control requires much, much more effort. But if this person does physically assault someone, they're going to jail. They're, they're not going to take, well, that person's really been working on their anger problem. They're not going to take that into account. The consequences remain the same. And so for that reason, to prepare the student for the reality, again, the first year of martial arts training, we're not preparing them for reality. What we're doing is we've got to build their confidence by making success or failure all about choice. And that's the ability range. But as they get to the higher belt ranks, now, success or failure, like in this example we're giving, at the higher belt ranks, even if it's difficult for you, but easy for them, there's still consequences. Even if that person can break boards easily, and for you it's a little harder, there's still the same consequences. Even if this person is uh, 12 years old, gigantic muscles, and you, like me, were a very scrawny 12 year old, you still have to be able to get to the board, or else we need to spend more time building your abilities because we can't get the students up to black belt before they've developed the abilities of black belt. But we believe in the yes we can attitude. We believe we can build those abilities. But we also believe, as we talked about in our previous videos, in the power of guided failure. That sometimes a student has to not get what they want in order to get motivated to step up their game. So um, that concludes our video. Uh, as we talk about it, we look at the student, and if they are unable, then they're not held accountable to that. We as instructors, and all of us as parents, have to choose the right small challenges so that we can build that ability in the long term. But if they are able, the question now becomes, how can we make this important to you? How can we motivate you, hopefully by positive means, but if all else fails by negative means, if we're talking about kids and behavior at home, we want to try the positive, and if it doesn't work, we have to go with negative to uh, motivate them that even if it's hard for them to clean their room because they're tired, even if the room is really messy and it takes a long time and it's hard, they still have to do it. And so, we have to make it important for them. So, that's what we're talking about. The uh, difference between um, ability versus inability, and easy versus difficult, and how we're gonna handle those situations differently. Next video, we'll be talking about uh, goal setting for kids, and uh, what we as instructors, kind of the do's and don'ts for us as instructors and parents when it comes to the topic of goal setting. Again, this is Carson Clues. If you like these videos, please, um, like and comment, kind of let us know um, anything you agree or disagree with. We'd love to see a discussion develop. And then also, as you know, 
Uh, like our page, ATA Martial Arts Kaiser. And then if you're interested, go to www.kaiserata.com. If you're looking at, um, we offer a special trial if you want to try out martial arts, six weeks for $69. That includes the uniform. Um, we'd love to give, get to see everybody try out martial arts. Thank you and have a great day.